Hey. My name's Danny. I'm flying solo this week for Southern California Comics weekly video update. Uh, comics came out this week. I'm gonna tell you about them. Some notable stuff, some brand new stuff, a lot of number ones. This is, if, if you're a fan of firsts of things, this is your week. Uh, let's start with the middle of something, though. Axis number three. Big Marvel Avengers X-Men event. Uh, they fight the Red Skull Onslaught some more, I think. I haven't read it yet, but I really want to. Oh, shocking revelations. Tons of villains. Who's on your side? I don't know. Uh, Hobgoblin's in it. It's got everything you want in one of these types of comics. <laughs> I'm reading it, so, you know. I ain't judging. All right, from a middle issue to a last issue, Starlight number six is out. It's the uh, Mark Miller, Goran Parlov, uh, Buzz Lightyear, Flash Gordon meets Unforgiven kind of thing. He's like an aging space hero guy. This is the last issue of this story. It's been really good. Like, the art's been amazing. And this is the epic finale. Unless it comes back for Starlight 2. I don't know. Don't wait for the movie on that one, because it's actually really good. All right. Now, now for the number ones, of which there are like 50. Um, new from Boom Studios. We've been doing a lot of creator-owned type stuff, getting that Image Comics money. It is Mimetic number one. It's by uh, James T. the fourth, who's doing some Batman stuff. I'm co-writing with Scott Snyder on the Batman stuff lately. But um, basically, the premise is: What if a meme could kill you? Like an internet meme, like. And clever, and clever images and such. Oh, they're fake Facebook pages in this comic. Yeah, so it's like, what if the internet was a thriller, I guess. Pretty cool idea, really nice style. The, the weird meme, by the way, is a sloth with a thumbs up. Been reading, uh, if you've been reading Boom Studios, you might have seen this ad, but that's pretty good. That's a, that's a notable thing. It is, it's, it's very eye-catching. Promising debut, one of three, so it's a miniseries. Looks like it'll be pretty good. Now, uh, being from Image Comics, the actual Image Comics, not the, uh, I don't want to say pretend, but the other creator-owned guys, is uh, Goners, by some people that I do not know. Um, it's, it's a horror thing, as you may have judged from the cover. It's got monsters, it's got mustaches, it's got nice energy, got kind of a Humberto Ramos style art, that's your thing. Really nice kind of animated looking style. Could be cool. It's a new image number one, so you should check it out. Two ninety nine. What else is two ninety nine? Brand new DC Comics number one, Arkham Manor. It's one of the many uh, interesting new Batman series coming out these days. Like they just keep coming out with like. Cool Batman comics. This one's by uh, Gary Duggan and Sean Crystal. It's basically, what if uh, Wayne Mansion became uh, Arkham Asylum? I don't know if I don't know if Arkham ran out of funding or what, but yep, Batman has to run Arkham Asylum pretty much. But what, I was flipping through this earlier, and the one thing I really like about it is a. Uh, Sean Crystal does a really good haggard Batman. Like, look at this dude. Like, that dude is not happy to be here, and he may need a shave. Like, really cool art. Kind of reminds me of, like, Trad Moore from Luther Strode. Like, really interesting choice from DC. And, uh, this story takes place before Batman and Turtle number 30, according to the title page, so if you're reading that, read this first, I guess. I don't know. Seems cool to me. Also new from DC, Deathstroke number one. Now you may remember Deathstroke number one from a few years ago. This is not that. This is a brand new one. You may not be able to tell from the title, but it is a brand new Deathstroke comic. Um, this is by uh, what's his name? Tony Daniel. It's got it's got a really nice style, like really clean. It's like the good David Finch, I think. Like, yeah, check that out. He does he does his work. It does it well. Since it's Deathstroke and it's like a violent assassin comic, it is quite gory, so... Uh, yeah, <laughs> buyer beware, I suppose. It ends on a really crazy cliffhanger. Which is like, what? What are they doing? What are they doing to this character? So, 
If you're a Deathstroke fan, you may want to keep up. He has a sword. And a knife. Check that out. A sword and a knife. That's nuts. Alright. Next to last, we have uh, Edward Scissorhands, number one. From uh, Kate Leth and uh, Drew Rausch. Some hot new talent for you. It is an Edward Scissorhands comic. This is literally all you need to know. Either you're in or you're out. I'm in. Because Edward Scissorhands is awesome. Like, the art style is really surprising. It's a little more, a little more cartoony, a little, a little more playful. Like, it, it uses the Tim Burton sort of visuals for something that looks really fun. Oh, Here's a, here's a, it's a really nice uh, pinup. Wow, it's a good looking comic. I'm glad I bought a copy already. Ha <laughs> ha. So, Edward Scissorhands, it's out, it's from IDW. It's by Cool People, and it is at the shop. Now, the thing I'm most excited for is uh, Grant Morrison's Multiversity Project. There's a bunch of one-shots that take place across the multiverse. He's been working on it for like seven years or something. Like, he's been... He's been putting in that work. He's been uh, crafting this for quite a long time. And this this, uh, this one-shot, because it's a series of one-shots, is called The Just, which is sort of... As you can tell from the magazine-style cover, it's more of a celebrity-inspired take on the DC superheroes. Sort of your, uh, your ecstatics, your uh, oh, it's a super young team, maybe? If you've read Final Crisis? Yeah. This is kind of a... Celebrity superheroes are kind of a subgenre in comics, which uh, I, th I think is really cool. So it's like, what if everyone was Booster Gold? Even Batman and Superman and Arrowette? <laughs> Arrowette is in this? Seriously. All your favorites. You can kind of tell when this was written. This sort of pre new 52 style stuff, which is kind of awesome. Ah, uh, the Adam's in it, in case for you Adam fans. Yeah, the Just. It's dope. I'm in. I'm stoked. That's it for new releases. I'm going to move on to a second thing. Let's find out what it is, because I don't know yet. Bad news, I can't do the Wonder Woman spinny thing, so, sorry. Hey guys, I'm back. Still solo. That, I never promised anyone else. Remember that. So, today I was just sort of at work, idly Googling. Don't worry, I wasn't Googling myself. And, uh, I got really interested in uh, sort of Marvel alternate universe stories. This is not really apropos of anything. I didn't, I just caught word of something, I was like, oh, I'm going to look up all of those. So, uh, I'm going to tell you about a few of them. Uh, first of all, we have uh, What If Age of Ultron. What If is sort of Marvel's classic series of, what if one different thing happened in the well-known superhero story? What if Aunt May got bitten by the radioactive spider, or whatever? So they spend an issue uh, sort of examining that. Um, lately, they've been doing it for crossover events, so it's like, what if... Uh, what if Avengers vs. X-Men turned out differently? What if the Avengers won? What if the X-Men won? I don't remember who won. I think ever, ever, we all won in our own ways. But, um, yeah, so what if Age of Ultron imagines uh, different futures as a result of various uh, outcomes of, what it, of Age of Ultron? I don't remember Age of Ultron that well. I didn't particularly like it. But uh, I like this series, because... It's just uh, writer Joe Keating and a bunch of different artists exploring different alternate Marvel universes. My, favorite's, my favorite is the one by uh, Ramon Villalobos, which I don't even know if it's not even remotely related to Ultron. But it, it features sort of a ragtag group of uh, superheroes taking on a giant robot. I think it's like, Ma yep, it's Master Mold from the X-Men's. But it has a Sea Captain Wolverine, Ghost Rider. A sort of Buddhist monk Hulk and an aging Spider-Man. They just go on like a suicide mission to beat Master Mold. Just, just a fun comic. Just a fun little thing. So it's, it's a cool one. It's a good one. Now, uh, Marvel is Marvel had their own sort of series of called the End, which uh, jumped forward and did the very last possible story of their own characters. So uh, 
when they got they got Chris Claremont to come back to do X Men: The End, which, as you might expect from a Chris Claremont comic, is three volumes long. It is three trade paperbacks. A lot of them are just like a couple issues, but nope, Claremont had to do a whole big story to to wipe the slate clean of X Men forever. So yeah, it's a whole big X Men epic full of characters. Wolverine might be in it. Fancy that. It's like it takes place in the future. A whole bunch of bad guys. Wow, all sorts of people. Ahab is in this. Ahab, I say. So, if you were reading Chris Claremont's X Men, wanna see how what his ideas for finishing it up? Uh, there you go. One of the one of the really awesome ones though is Punisher: The End. It is a single one shot. It's in the dollar book section if you want to pick it up. It's by uh, Garth Ennis and the legendary artist Richard Corbin, and it takes place during World War III. Like, the land's destroyed. Like, it's, it's kind of, I, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a post-apocalyptic thing. And the Punisher murders a bunch of people, as you may expect. And the ending is pretty nasty. Just the, the emotional gut punch of the finale. Pretty good. Pretty good. So yes, dollar book section, come find it. Because it's great. Uh, the most intriguing one to me is uh, Daredevil End of Days. Notice it's not called Daredevil The End. So it's not really, not quite part of that world. But, um, it's Brian Michael Bendis, probably the last, one of the last definitive Daredevil artists, or Daredevil creators, guys who worked on Daredevil. He's one of the definitive ones. He joins a bunch of his, uh, his cohorts and some new people to do a final tale. I'd say it's sort of the capstone to his Daredevil run. So, spoilers, Daredevil dies in the first issue. And he has a, he has, his final word is just some random word that no one's ever heard before. And so uh, Ben Yurick, the Daily Bugle reporter, has to investigate and find out what horrible secret this man, who is full of horrible secrets, was keeping. One so horrible that he had to basically have a deathbed revelation of it. Pretty neat. I am. I think it's very cool. It's got some some classic artists: uh, David Mack, Klaus Janson, Bill Sinkovich, and Alex Maleev. Sort of been this his main artist in in that original Daredevil run. Matt Murdock is dead, but is it the end of Daredevil? That's what it says on the back. I'm just reading the back now. Yeah. So that struck me today. I thought it was kind of cool. Share some this. This kind of weird little trend of comics that Marvel was doing for a little bit. A little alternate universe stuff. Always a little bit fun. You can always kill off everyone at the end, so I think that's kind of the, the appeal. Yeah, that's it for me. Um, Matt may be here next week. I don't know. I can't predict the future. What's important is that I'm here, and you're here. But not anymore. Bye. <laughs>